Factsverse presents Experts unravel the mystery of a lost World War II submarine and its 80 vanished crew members. In June 2019, Tim Taylor and his team were searching for a U.S. submarine that disappeared off the coast of Japan in 1944. When the sub disappeared, there were 80 sailors on board. They used a remote-controlled underwater vehicle to search the bottom of the sea, and something happened with the ship, and Taylor brought it back to the surface. He looked at the data that was recorded and spotted some anomalies. He sent another probe into the water, and what he found was shocking. The ship that Tim and his team were searching for was the USS Grayback, also known as SS-208. The search was part of the Lost 52 project. It's a group dedicated to locating the 52 U.S. submarines that went missing during World War II. The Grayback went missing in March of 1944, and they hoped to find out what had happened to the missing sub. The sub went out on January 28, 1944, from Pearl Harbor for a combat mission. When the sub went missing, it was its tenth and final mission. Before the sub disappeared, the crew sent a message to the base on February 24th. They reported sinking two Japanese freighters and damaging two others. The crew sent another message on February 25th and reported damaging a liner called Asamamaru. These two attacks caused the sub to use their only two torpedoes, and the sub was supposed to then head to the Midway Atoll in the North Pacific to resupply. The Navy expected the sub to dock around March 7th, but it never arrived. When the ship didn't appear for another three weeks, the Navy declared the sub and the 80-member crew lost at sea. This happened March 30th. The Navy believed that the Grayback and the 80-member crew had sunk 100 miles southeast of the Japanese island of Okinawa. Later, it was determined that the data that led them to this conclusion had a crucial error. The U.S. Navy relied on war records kept by the Japanese. It turned out that one digit in a map reference was transcribed wrong when it was being translated, and that meant the sub was much further away from where they believed that it sank. Tim is the founder of the Lost 52 Project, and he was working hard to find out what happened to the sub. He got in touch with a Japanese researcher named Yutaka Iwasaki. Tim asked him to comb through the files of the Sasebo base that was used by the Japanese Imperial Navy during World War II. The records included the transcriptions from daily radio updates from Naha on Okinawa Island, which was the site of a Japanese naval air facility. Yutaka got to work, and it was then that he noticed the single-digit error in the transcribed version of the report. It was radio into Sasebo from Naha on February 27, 1944. This was two days after the Grayback reported to the base the last time. The report detailed an attack by a Nakajima B-5N bomber that had taken off from an aircraft carrier. It reported dropping a 500-pound bomb on a surfaced submarine. It also detailed how the bomb hit the sub to the rear and the vessel exploded. It sank, and according to the reports, there were no survivors. In 2019, Yutaka described what he found in the Japanese war files. He said the radio record very clearly mentioned the longitudes and latitude of the attack. According to the coordinates, it marked a location over 100 miles from the one that the U.S. Navy believed to be correct back in 1949. Now that Tim and his team had this new information, they had a better idea of where they could start looking. Tim and his team set out during the spring of 2019 to search for the new location of the Grayback. They found the submarine and discovered that the hull was almost entirely intact, even though several decades had passed. They were excited to have finally found the sub, but it was also a sad moment. They found the 80 crew members who had perished that day as well. While finding the crew was sad for Tim and his team, it also brought closure to the families of the crew. Gloria Herney lost her uncle, Raymond Parks, on the sub. He was an electrician's mate, first class. In November 2019, Gloria spoke to ABC News and said, There's a book I read, and it says these ships are known only to God, but now we know where the Grayback is. For Tim, Finding the Grayback was the goal, and he did what he wanted to do. For the families who lost loved ones on the sub, it finally gave them the closure that they'd been praying for year after year. Kathy Taylor, the niece and goddaughter of John Patrick King, an electrician's mate, third class, told ABC News that ever since she was a little girl, she planned to find him or follow him. At the very least, she was going to keep his memory alive. She was happy that she finally now knew what happened to her uncle. Tim is interested in solving the mysteries of other missing vessels, and he says that bringing closure to grieving families is just an added bonus.
For all of our men and women in uniform who lay down their lives daily to protect our freedoms, we here at Facts First salute you. Subscribe for more.